Hello, my lovely learners, or welcome to Bloom and Grow Education. My name is Meredith. Today's lesson is suitable for Year 5 students who are applying for the Gates Test. It is a writing lesson that is, um, I've done a lot of these kinds of lessons um, where a student looks at a stimulus and we I give them feedback on, on the writing sample that they produced. The stimulus is this one here where we've got the sand um, flowing into the house. And the writing sample is called the escape room. Now, usually I like my students to type their work because it makes it much easier to edit um, to edit their work. Uh, but in this case, I ask them to hand write it uh, because that's what you have to do in the actual test. But this student forgot about that part. So that, that's OK. Makes certainly makes it easier for me to mark. All right. The escape room. It started when I was walking back home from the library. It was getting late as I reached the alleyway, my shortcut. It is creepy, but it's easier to go home this way than the other routes. By the time, by this time, when I took a step, it didn't feel right, but I thought that was going crazy. So I kept going towards a disaster. Suddenly, bonk, I got hit right on the forehead. I blacked out, but had but then had woken up in an abandoned house. It had fully opened windows and a blue run and blue rundown wooden walls. Creepy, I thought to myself. There was a door, although it looked locked. I tried seeing if I could go through the windows, but it, it was too small for me to fit through. It seemed like I was in an escape room, but if I didn't get out in time, I'd die. I began to hurry and look around the house when I saw this painting, which looked exactly like the house I was in, and it was inside of an hourglass. I panicked. Time was going fast and I hadn't even figured any, out anything. Thankfully from the movies I movies I'd watched, there's always a secret passage if you lean against the wall. I tried doing it everywhere but no hope. When finally I reached the kitchen, I leaned against the wall where the dining table was supposed to be. I heard something. Excited, I used all my power to push the walls sideways. Slowly it did. Finally, I'd managed to do it. Thanks to those movies I'd watched, there was an eerie staircase. Sorry. Finally, I'd managed to do it. Thanks to those movies I'd watched. There was an eerie staircase leading down. Without he hesitating, I ventured down. It led me to some old library, books everywhere. It seemed like one of those books would help me escape, but I didn't have time to read every single book there. So I looked around until I found this book on the cover saying how to escape the hourglass house. Seemed like my seemed like my problem. So I quickly went through the pages. It was nearly the end of the book until I found it. I was I was nearly at the end of the book until I found the words. Please let me escape. Have mercy on me, I read aloud. Then whoosh, mist surrounded me, and and once it disappeared, I was back in the alleyway, safe and sound. Not wanting to cause any more trouble, I hurried home and into my cozy bedroom. Mum nor Dad were home yet. I greeted my cat, Wolfie. I tried to forget what had happened, but something was still disturbing me. Questions, several questions about the place and the books, like how the person who made the book knew how to escape, or how I ended up there, but remained a mystery, at least for now. Okay, I really like this story. It's nice to have this sort of this escape room kind of an idea when it's done well. And she almost did it well. So I I really liked the, um, seemed like I was in the escape room, this hourglass part. So this part about her, so when I saw the painting, which looked exactly like the house I was in, that it was inside of an hourglass. So that's her first clue. Um, and so she knows that she needs it needs to come out. And then she gets into this second, the second part, uh, sorry, the third part of her escape. Um, when she gets this book, How to Escape the Hourglass House. So I really like all of that. So some of the one of the parts that I don't like is this ste second step. So first step was the picture of the hourglass. Second step was her randomly going around pressing on walls. And the third step was the book. So I don't like this part in the middle. 
So it would have been great if she could have come up with some other hourglass related escape room blue thing which she has which she has to solve. Now the other thing that would have been really great is if she had lent into this idea about the hourglass. So what if, so it says, um, but if I don't get out in time, I'll die. Is that because in the hourglass, the hourglass is filling up with sand. So you know how you have an hourglass and it falls through the little thing and the sand fills up and fills up and fills up in the base. So what if, if she doesn't get out in time, she'll suffocate on this sand that's pouring, pouring in. So it would have been really great if she had lent more into that idea. So the pouring in of the sand um, as it flows through the hourglass is the thing that will um, end in what result in death. Um so I'm not going to rewrite this part, but I'm going to have a play with this. So I, I, it seemed like I was in the escape room, but if I didn't, okay, so how does the character know that if she doesn't get out in time that she will die? So let's take that out. Escape room. I began to hurry and look around the house when I saw this painting, which is, looked exactly like the house I was in, but it was inside an hourglass. I realised what was happening. The sand that was cascading in through the windows was falling from high above through a tiny funnel. It was flowing with ever increasing speed in through the smashed windows of the house and flooding the room like a tsunami of sands. No, a tsunami, tsunami of death. If I didn't escape soon, I would drown. Okay, and then she would need to go. Um, so I desperately began looking around for my next clue. And then she could go on and write that part. Now, the other thing was that it would have been great if her conclusion was a little bit different. Um, I stepped back into, so please let me escape. Have mercy on me, I read aloud. Then whoosh, mist surrounded me. And once it disappeared, I was back in the alleyway, safe and sound. Not wanting to cause any more trouble, I hurried home. And sees her cat, Wolfie, and then off she goes to bed, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so what about, so some random person at the beginning of the story has snuck up behind her and gone bonk on the head. Well, why has this happened? So people don't just, I mean, sometimes people with mental health issues will do that kind of thing. But in general, you don't go up to random people and bonk them on the head. So why did this person do that? Well, she could connect back to that at, be, that at the beginning, connect to what she was talking about in the beginning here in the end. So me stood as something and you can come up with with um, a reason for that. Now, the other piece of feedback that I gave her is what, so you could go in that direction. Why has this person randomly come up and smacked her on the head? The other thing is, okay, so assuming that somebody has done this for whatever reason, and she's fallen into like a, a coma or had some kind of amnesia. Is this the way, is her, is, is this her way of escaping from that? So she can only get out of the coma if she's able to escape from the escape room. So it, it's escaping from the, the constraints of her mind within, within this head injury. 
So how could we how could we write in that kind of ending? So I quickly went through the pages and near the end of the book, I found I found the words. What about? And nearly at the end of the book, I found a picture. It was of a girl lying in a hospital bed. She looked extremely pale. She looked like me. A sudden recognition came to my mind. In the distance, I could hear the steady beat of an electric machine and the muttered voice of my mum praying nearby. I felt pulled one way to be sucked down and buried in the sands and the other to be pulled lightly up into the sky and towards that loving voice. Then words appeared on the page and then we could bring in that mercy thing that I've just um, deleted. So it's not, sorry, kind of do speech marks. It's time to go home. I read aloud. Then my eyes fluttered open and blah, blah, blah. I see mum. A sudden recognition came to my mind. In the distance, I could hear the steady beat of an electric machine and the muttered voice of my mum praying nearby. I felt pulled one way to be sucked down and buried in the sands and buried permanently in the sand and the other to be pulled lightly up into the sky and towards that loving voice. Then words appeared on the page. It's time to go home. I read aloud. Then my eyes fluttered open and you can wake up and see your mum and all that kind of thing. Okay. So there is a couple of options with how we could have played with that hourglass idea. Um, so it's sort of like a, a race against the clock. I've got to, I've got to get out of here before, um, bef before the, the, sand all fills up and then a, a bit of a, a joining up with that is the idea of the um if this is all in my mind and I've got this escape room I've got to escape is actually in my mind because I'm in a coma or something like that okay that brings me to the end of the lesson I hope that has given you some ideas for your own writing samples thank you very much for joining me I hope that you have found this lesson interesting and Thank you very much for joining me and I would love it if you could please thank me in return by liking this video and subscribing to my channel and I'll see you at the next lesson.